King Oedipus by Sophocles Cast of Characters Oedipus, King of Thebes Yocasta, Wife of Oedipus, also his mommy Creon, Brother of Yocasta Tiresias, a blind prophet A priest, a messenger, a shepherd, an attendant A chorus of Theban elders The king's attendants, the queen's attendants, and the citizens of Thebes the first scene is before the royal palace at Thebes, in front of the king's palace, upon the steps, and around the altars, which stand in the forecourt, are grouped numerous citizens of Thebes, sitting in attitudes of supplication, which means worship. Enter Oedipus from the central door, attended. Children, new blood of Cadmus's ancient line. What is the meaning of this supplication, these branches and garlands, the incense filling the city, these prayers for the healing of pain, these lamentations? I have not thought it fit to rely on my messengers, but I'm here to learn for myself. I, Oedipus, whose name is known afar, you, reverend sir, in right of age, should speak for all of them. What is the matter? Some fear? Something you desire? I would willingly do anything to help you. Indeed, I should be heartless were I to stop my ears to a general petition such as this. My lord and king, we are gathered here, as you see, young and old, from the tenderest chicks to the age-bent seniors, priests, I of Zeus, and the pick of our young manhood. More sit in the marketplace carrying boughs like these, and around the twin altars of Pallas and the sacred embers of divination beside the river of Esmenus. You too have seen our city's affliction, caught in a tide of death from which there is no escaping. Death in the fruitful flowering of her soil. Death in the pastures. Death in the womb of woman. And pestilence, a fiery demon gripping the city, stripping the house of Cadmus to fatten hell with profusion of lamentation. We come to you now, sir, as your suppliants, I, and these children. It is not as holding you the equal of gods, but as the first of men whether in the ordinary business of mortal life or in the encounters of man with more than man. It was you, we remember, a newcomer on Cadmus's town, that broke our bondage to the vile enchantress, with no knowledge or hint that we could give, but, as we truly believe, with the help of God, you gave us back our life. Now, Oedipus great and glorious, we seek your help again, Find some deliverance for us by any way that God or man can show. We know that experience of trials past gives strength to present counsel. Therefore, O oh greatest of men, restore our city to life. Have a care for your fame. Your diligence saved us once. Let it not be said that under your rule we were raised up only to fall. Save. Save our city and keep her safe forever. Under the same bright star that gave us then good fortune, guide us into good today. If you are to be our king, as now you are, be king of living men, not emptiness. Surely there is no strength in wall or ship where men are lacking and no life breathes within them. I grieve for you, my children. Believe me, I know that all you desire of me, all that you suffer, and... While you suffer, none suffers more than I. You have your several griefs, each for himself. But my heart bears the weight of my own and yours and all my people's sorrows. I am not asleep. I weep and walk through endless ways of thought, and I have not been idle. One thing I have already done, the only thing that promised hope, my kinsman Creon, the son of Menachus, has been sent to the Pythian house of Apollo to learn what act or word of mine could help you. This is the day I reckon he should return. It troubles me that he is not already here. But when he comes, whatever the God requires upon my honor, it shall be done. Well said. And in, he describes someone approaching from a distance. And look, they're making signs that Creon is on his way. Yes, he is here. And with smiling face, oh, Apollo, if his news is good, it must be good. His head is crowned with bay, full buried. That is a sign. We shall soon know. 
You can hear us now. Royal brother, what news? What message for us from the mouth of God? Enter Creon. Good news. This is to say that good may come even out of painful matters if all goes well. And the answer, you hold me between fear and hope. The answer? I will tell you if you wish me to speak in the presence of all. If not, let us go in. Speak before all. Their plight concerns me now more than my life. This then is the answer, and this the plain command of Phoebus our Lord. There is an unclean thing, born and nursed on our soil, polluting our soil, which must be driven away, not kept to destroy us. What unclean thing, and what purification is required? The banishment of, or the payment of blood for blood, for the shedding of blood is the cause of our city's peril. What blood does he mean? Did he say who it was that died? Oh, we had a king, sir, before you came to lead us. His name was Laius. I know. I never saw him. He was killed, and clearly the meaning of the God's command is that we bring the unknown killer to justice. And where might he be? Where shall we hope to uncover the faded traces of that far distant crime? Here, the God said, seek and ye shall find. Unsought goes undetected. Was it at home, or in the field, or abroad on foreign soil, that Laius met his death, this violent death? He left the country, as he said, on a pilgrimage, and from that day forth, we never saw him again. Was there no word, no fellow traveler, who saw what happened, whose evidence could have been used? All died, save one who fled from the scene in terror and had nothing to tell for certain, except one thing. What was it? One thing might point the way to others, if once we could lay our hands on the smallest clue. His story was that robbers, not one but many, fell in with the king's party and put them to death. Robbers would hardly commit such a daring outrage, unless they were paid to do it by someone here. That too was suggested, but in the troubles that followed, no avenger came forward to punish the murderers. What troubles? Surely none great enough to hinder a full inquiry into a royal death? Uh, the Sphinx, with her riddles, forced us to turn our attention from insoluble mysteries to more immediate matters. I will start afresh and bring everything into the light. All praise to Phoebus and thanks for your part to you. But thus pointing out our duty to the dead, you will find me as willing an ally as you could wish in the cause of God in our country. My own cause, too. Not merely from a fellow creature will I clear this paint, but from myself. The killer of Lias, whoever he was, might think to turn his hand against me. Thus, serving Lias, I serve myself. Now, up for your seats, my children. Away with these bows. Bring all the people of Cadmus here and tell them there is nothing I will not do. Certain it is that by the help of God, we stand or fall. Oedipus goes into the palace, a messenger goes to summon the people, the priest dismisses the suppliants. Up, oh, children, now the king has promised us all that we came to ask. Let us pray that Phoebus, from whom the answer came himself, may come to save and deliver us out of our heavy afflictions. All the suppliants disperse and then enter the chorus of Theban elders for their first choral ode, which will reflect on what's happened so far. In Thebes, city of light, from the Pythian house of gold, the gracious voice of heaven is heard. With fear my heart is riven, fear of what shall be told. O healer of Delos, hear, fear is upon us. What wilt thou do? Things new or old as the circling year? Speak to us, daughter of golden hope. Come, deathless word, deathless Athena, first daughter of Zeus, on thee we call. Then, on thy sister, Queen Artemis, over our city enthroned in her majesty, and Phoebus, Lord of the Bow, show us again your threefold power this hour, as in ages long ago. From the fire and pain of pestilence, save us and make us clean. Sorrows beyond all telling, sickness rife in our ranks, outstripping invention of remedy, blight on barren earth and barren agonies of birth, life after life from the wildfire winging swiftly into the night. Beyond all telling, the city reeks with the death in her streets. Beyond all telling, the city reeks with the death in her streets, death bringing. None weeps, and her children die. 
None by to pity. Mothers at every altar kneel. Golden Athena, come near to our crying. Apollo, hear us and heal. Not with a brattle of bronze, but loud around us the battle is raging. Swift the death fiend flying. Cling to the farthest corners of the sea or to some bleak north bay, the onset of his armory. Night's agony grows into tortured day. Zeus, let thy thunders crush, thy lightning slay. Slay with thy golden bow, I say, and slay him, Artemis, over the Lysaean hills resplendent. Bacchus, our name god, golden in the dance of mated revelry. I, oh, thy fiery torch advance to slay the death god, the grim enemy god, whom all other gods abhor to see. Well, I hope you all got something out of that. That is the first section of the Oedipus play, and there are four other sections. Now, after listening and watching it and reading along with your own version of it, or your own uh, PDF of it, if you've been following along, you can go ahead and listen to the mini lecture on this section. And you can do the same for each section of the play. Remember, there are five separate sections.